So uh, we have introduced the concept of a surface integral. Suppose S is a surface with a parametrization R, which is a vector valued function from two dimensional D to three dimensional space. Uh, and F is a continuous function on S. Then, by definition, the surface integral of F over S is the double integral over D. Uh, the integrand of this double integral is uh, substituting x, which is a point in S, by Ruv. And then, multiplying the partial derivative of F, uh, of R, which is respect to U, cross product with that, which is respect to V, and evaluated at the point Uv. So this is a function of two variables Uv, then du dv. I remind you that the x here is not single value. Uh, x is not a real number. x is a point on S, therefore x is actually a point x1, x2, x3 in R3. Okay? So this is the definition of a surface integral. And uh, uh, we have also uh, compute some uh, surface integral, including uh, physical application. Uh, that is the mass of a surface. Uh, if you know the uh, density, value, values and density at every point. That is, the density is a function of the location of points on the surface. But now there is a problem, natural problem. Because given a surface S, uh, it can have more than one parametrization. So, to say that this is a good definition of the surface integral, uh, we need to prove that the right-hand side in the definition does not depend on the parametrization you choose. In other words, if another parametrization, suppose phi from omega to r3 is also a parametrization. We need to ensure that the previous integral equals the new one using the uh, new parametrization and construct the double integral in the same pattern. That is uh, integral over the uh, matrix domain and then substituting x by the new parametrization and also um, the norm of the partial derivative of the new parametrization. We need to have this equality. Otherwise, you could not define the surface integral using this equality, okay? The surface integral, the, the left-hand side, does not uh, depend on the parametrization. The left-hand side, no parametrization appears, so it should not depend on parametrization. Therefore, you change a uh, parametrization, you, you must make sure that the right-hand side are equal. Otherwise, this definition is wrong. Ah, it's not uh, reasonable, okay? So we will prove this important uh, result. This guarantee that our uh, definition of the surface integral uh, is valid, okay? So uh, we prove this result. Uh, we state this result as a theorem. That is, suppose phi is another parametrization.
then we need to prove the original double integral using the older parameterization uh -huh. equals the new one Uh, we need to prove this result. So here is a picture uh, uh, demonstrated the relation of these two parameterization. Okay. Um, once this theorem is proved, as I said before, this means that our definition of the surface integral uh, is valid, is well defined. So we need to prove this. Uh, proof. For a point of C eta in omega, uh, in this picture I denote by C zero and eta zero, uh, but that is not the very, uh, okay. The C eta is valid over omega, okay. So, we can take, uh, we, we will construct a uh, the idea of the proof is that uh, we construct a map from omega to d because we want to transform a double integral over d to an integral uh, over another domain omega. So we, we, we will consider using the change of variable formula for multiple integral. Uh, thus, we need to define a map from omega to d uh, and uh, uh, prove that this map satisfies the requirement of the change of a variable formula, then we apply the change of a variable formula. This is the idea for uh, prove this theory. And uh, this is the natural idea for proving result in this manner, uh, in this style, okay? Uh, integral over different uh, domain. Uh, naturally, you need to use the change of variable formula, okay? So we need to define this map phi. Uh, now, for Cauchy eta in omega, we take uv to be the point in d, the unit point in d, such that r u v equal phi cosi eta. Uh, such a point exists and it is unique. Is this a unique? Uh, because uh, for cosi eta in omega, phi cosi eta is a point in S. This point is a phi cosi eta. And, uh, and since S is the image of R, therefore there must be some point in D such that the image of that point and the, the map R is precisely this phi cosi eta. And also uh, the uh, the point in D uh, must be unique because R is an injective. R is injective, therefore such such point is unique, exists and unique. Therefore, this correspondence cosi eta to such uv defined a map this map is denoted by phi from omega to d such that uh, is precisely okay that is uh, given a point in omega here you can go directly by phi to a point in the surface or you can go by phi to d and then by r to the surface the results are the same okay uh, in other words this map phi this map phi uh, satisfy this condition 
uh, our our map feed is the composition of R uh, and the, the new feed. Uh, these two feed, unfortunately, their pronunciation is the same, but uh, uh, they are different uh, Greek letter. Okay, mm, different. Uh, one is this, the other is this. They are different. Anyway, so this means that this means that the components are identical. So the first component of phi is the first component of R evaluated as phi one cos eta, phi two cos eta. The new defined phi has two components, phi one and phi two, because it is a map between uh, two dimensional domains omega and d. Similarly, we have phi two c eta equals r two phi one c eta phi two c eta, and also the third component Okay. Now uh, we want to prove that this map is C one. Uh, uh, a very important uh, ingredient in our proof is that phi is C1. We need this to be C1. Continuous differentiable. Uh, so to prove that this map is C1, we take a point. We take a point near uh, in omega. Uh, for this reason, To prove C is C1, we take a point C0, eta0 in omega. Then uh, we have U0, V0 denote the image of C0, eta0 under the map phi by U0, V0. Of course, this is Phi one cos zero eta zero, phi two cos zero eta zero. Ah, uh, denote the image of cos zero eta zero and the phi by u zero v zero. Ah, uh, we may assume that this Jacobian determinant. At the point u0, v0 is not 0. Uh, we might make this assumption. Why can we make this assumption? Uh, because our R uh, as a parametrization of a surface, uh, because as a parametrization of the first surface, R u cross R v by the left computation, this is R2, R3, UV, R3, R1, UV, R1, R2, UV. This is by the uh, definition of cross product. You can check that uh, this equality is true. Our R, our map R as a parametrization, uh, a requirement is that uh, it satisfies the condi uh, condition is satisfied is that this is not zero at every point in D, every UV in D. So we might uh, assume without loss of generality, we might assume that this is not zero at the point U zero V zero. Okay, so this is why we can make this assumption uh, R, uh, U zero V zero is not zero. So So if this is, we might assume R1, R2, UV at U0, V0 is not zero, as I said before. Then this map by the inverse function theorem. Uh, 
this map R1, R2, this can be considered as a map to R2. Our map R, our map R as a parameterization of the surface is a map from D to R3. But we ignored the third component, we only take the first two components. It is a map from D to R2, okay? It is a map from D to R2, uh, that is this map. So this map, uh, because the Jacobian determinant is not zero, so this map is a low, has a local inverse. Uh, near the point u0 v0 uh, how to say uh, we draw a picture so this is u and this is v and this is our map r1 r2 to the uh, x y spa space uh, anyway uh, so u0 v0 is here the image of u0 v0 is here, and uh, uh, by the inverse function theorem, this map is locally invertible. This means that we have a small neighborhood around u0 v0. So we have a small neighborhood around this point. And another neighborhood around its emerge. So that this trick to, to these two neighborhood, capital U and capital V, uh, the map is a uh, diffeomorphism. That is, it is bijective, bijective, therefore it has an inverse. The inverse is also C1. Okay? So we have a local uh, inverse. Uh, that is the local inverse near this point. The local inverse. Is defined near the image of u0 to v0. Uh, the local inverse is r1, r2 inverse, which is defined uh, in the, the neighborhood v of the image point of u0 to v0. That is here. Uh, 